Friday's Digest, Season 1, Episode 40. Today we're going to talk about the pictures of parents you never knew. Pictures. Pictures, the two-dimensional squares you have on your walls, on your desks, in your albums, on your phones. Pictures that convey the past, the present, and the future. When the war started, we had no idea what was going on. But then the pictures came. Pictures of atrocities, pictures of horror, pictures of the present. After a few days, these pictures were replaced by pictures from the past. Pictures of the dead, pictures of the missing, pictures of smiling, joyful people. Happy people. People who don't know that the doors of hell are about to open. These joyful images from the past are the pictures that I can't stop thinking of. They constantly show in my mind. I watch my children and I see the faces of the joyful children who are now gone. The murdered. The missing abducted. And there's one particular image, that one picture that keeps coming back to my mind. In that picture, there is a family of four, a mom, a dad, and twins, 10-month-old twins. The parents look so happy, and the twins' faces you can't see because they are blurred for privacy, but the parents are so happy. The parents were murdered on October 7th. The twins are now orphans. I often think about these twins, picturing them getting older. In my mind, I see them all grown up. They are looking at that picture, the same picture which is now on their wall at home. The picture of their joyful parents holding them as infants. They never knew their parents. So what thoughts cross their minds? What thoughts are in the heads of these two grown-up twins? Pacing. I've taken more tests than I can remember, and I studied so much throughout my life. How do I study? Well, I pace. I pace and I read. I study and I walk. I study on my feet. As a teenager and a young student, I used handwritten notes. But since 2010, my iPad became my study companion. Technology has advanced since then, but the essence remains. I pace and I study. I walk and I think. I often studied at my parents' house, and I did the same thing. I paced there. I just walked throughout their home with my notes or with my iPad studying and reflecting. But occasionally I paused and looked around. I examined the pictures they have on their walls. And there's one picture that always catches my eyes. Always. It's a picture of my grandparents in their 20s alongside my mother. She was age three at that picture. The time was the 1940s. But this picture actually never happened. If you look closely, you'll see that it's actually two photos glued next to each other. One of my grandparents and the other of my mother. My grandmother passed away when my mother was just one year and eight months old. In that picture, my three-year-old mother stands without her mother. But... The two pictures glued together create a fantasy. A fantasy of my mother standing next to her mother. I never met that grandmother. My mother barely knew her. My grandmother was an Auschwitz survivor. Auschwitz is a Nazi death camp. She was the sole survivor, the only survivor of a family of eight. The Nazis murdered her mom, murdered her dad murdered her four sisters, and murdered 
her one brother. She survived and gave birth after the Holocaust to my mother. But a year and eight months later, she passed away. She passed away from an infection after giving birth to a stillborn child. Something a simple antibiotic could have cured, but she never got that antibiotic. So my mother, her father, and her aunt came to Israel. They were the only three left from that family. My mother was three when they came to Israel. My grandfather looked for a new mother for his daughter, so he remarried. He remarried my step-grandmother. She was also a Holocaust survivor, and she lost her entire family there. Now, she was never a step-grandma to us. She was mom to my mom and grandma to us. That's an extreme story, right? But there were so many extreme stories from the Holocaust era, stories of the past. So here I am, thinking about this picture at my parents' home, my grandparents and my mother, a moment that exists on the wall. And I think to myself, what were they like, my grandparents? What did they think about when this picture was taken? How did my grandmother's voice sound like? What, what did she like to do? And then I think to myself, how lucky we are not living through the Holocaust, not being the sole survivors of families murdered. For years, I looked at that picture and whispered to myself, never again. But now, since the war began, new images flood my mind. The 10-month-old twins are in my thoughts, but there are many others. Joyful images from the past. Images that many orphans will look at as they grow up, imagining their parents' lives, imagining how they sound like, imagining their interests. What happened to my grandparents' generation in the past is happening to our children in the present. Our future generations suffer. I never imagined witnessing so many stories like my family's. Pictures that signify what could have been, but is no more. So what can we do? Just say never again? Is, is, it's not enough. We can't just tell our children never again and hope for the best. We must teach our children to seek the goodness, to make others' lives better, to leave the world better than how they found it, to be kind, to be considerate, and to be positive, positive members of their communities, to do good. But we must also shield them from evil. What is evil, you ask? Well, evil is doing something bad for the sake of doing something bad. Evil is making others miserable and enjoying it. Evil is causing others to suffer with the pure intent of making them suffer. We must eradicate evil. If we don't, then happiness will exist only in the pictures on the wall. See you next week.